Hello everyone, this is Mrs. McCreary. Today we're going to be talking about adding compound numbers. Compound numbers are, um, they're really m most often used in measurements. You're measuring something that's broken into different parts. Um, our book talks about it in pounds and shillings and pence um, as, you know, that was the common notation of the time. That's not something we're very familiar with at this current state. What we would be more familiar with is um, is the application in time, where uh, there's a different, I guess, uh, conversion between how there are um, 24 hours in a day and 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in uh, a minute and how there's that difference of how many it takes to go from one unit to the next unit. That's really what we're talking about in compound numbers. So as we talk in elementary treatise section uh, 103, it says, we must then place the compound numbers that are to be added in such a manner that their units or parts of the same name may stand under each other. We must then find separately the sum of each column, always recollecting how many parts of each de each denomination it takes to make one of the next higher. So here, um, again, as I said, the most common application that we would see uh, in a, in a modern-day American society, because you know England do st does still use the pound system uh, predominantly. But here, for us, the most common application would be telling time if we have to uh, measure lengths of time. So I have 4 hours, 20 minutes, and 16 seconds plus 6 hours, 40 minutes, and uh, 40, or 52 seconds. So we have our compound numbers that are being added. So the first thing that we have to do is to place the compound numbers that are to be added so that the units may stand under each other. So I'm going to rewrite this. So I've got hours, minutes, seconds, 4, 20, 16, and then 6, 40, 52. I'm adding them. And then I'm going to find separately the sum of each column, always remembering that once, you know, in, in here, to go from seconds to minutes, that um, conversion is going to happen once we get to 60. And to go from minutes to hours, again, it's going to get to 60. And then if we were going to go to days, we'd have that conversion of 24. So we have uh, 16 and 52, which is going to give us 8, uh, no, 68. But again, since we are, uh, 68 would then be a minute and 8 seconds, so we're going to carry one of our minutes over here to the minute column. So that'll give us one. That'll again give us 61. So we carry one over to the hours, which then we get 11. So 11 hours, 1 minute, and 8 seconds. Okay, so... We will um, go ahead and do another one where we're going from miles, yards, feet, inches, because again, you know, there are 12 feet, 12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, and uh, 1,760 yards in a mile. So we have those different conversions. So we're going to go ahead and line up our uh, similar units. So I have miles, yards, feet, inches, 12 miles, 800 yards, 2 feet, 3 inches, 6 miles, 7 yards, 2 feet, 10 inches. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and just add it with our initial values and then I will um, do the converting in a different step. So I'm just going to change colors so you can see how that all works out. Okay, so 
3 plus 10 is 13, 2 plus 2 is 4, 807, 18. So, um, I'll grab another color again. Okay, so we have issues with our inches and our feet because we know 13 inches gives us a foot. We're actually going to take 12 of these inches, add it over here, and be left with 1. And then here we have 5, but we know that 3 feet gives us a yard. So we're going to take 3 feet away, leaving 2, and put that other yard over here. Now 808, still have plenty of room for yards before we get over into miles, so 18. So our final answer is 18 miles, 808 yards, 2 feet, and 1 inch.